Hey y'all, this is Christy. Welcome to Christy's Cropping and Creating. And today I'm in a field of green grass. I hope that y'all will enjoy this video. I chose to do the grass because um, we're, I'm gonna eventually be working with green papers. So I just thought it would be fun to do something different. Let me turn this off over here. Um, I am going to teach you a layout today. I'll hold it up before I switch to the desktop. And um, oh, you can't see it when I do that. So never mind. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. I guess. Um, I am an independent Creative Memories advisor, and um, I hope that you will enjoy this recording. I have pre-cut some of the items that we're going to use just to save a little bit of time. But um, anyway. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to like this video and subscribe and um, send me a message to ask me any questions that you might have. But let me switch screens now down to the desktop. Okay, so I was watching a, um, a TV series and I kept noticing this wallpaper. And the wallpaper, it wasn't orange, but it actually looked like um, these circles with the line down the middle. And so I thought, hey, that might be a fun scrapbook layout. So here is a double page spread that we're going to create today. And again, um, I've already said this, but we're going to use some, some green papers. This is from Vivid Melodies that came out um, at some point in 2022. I think it was in the fall, but I can't say that for sure right off the top of my head. I'll use the green mats and I'm probably going to use this um, tone on tone background. So um, so we'll have the circles cut out of this paper and then this will be the background and this will be the mats. We'll see how that goes. I do have white to do the um, strip down the middle like I do here. OK. So what I pre-cut, what I started pre-cutting was the circles. And it's because for, for this particular double page spread, you need 18 and you don't need, as you can see, part of it's gonna get cut off um, in three places, but um, you're gonna need 18. So rather than y'all sitting here and watching me pre-cut 18 circles, I thought I would go ahead and get started. Um, so I've done all these and let me show you this real quick too. This one, I made a little bit of a mistake, um, kind of cut the corner out of it. But in the grand scheme of things, that doesn't matter because I can just turn that to where it will get cut off of the page. So no worries if you do have a mishap. And I think I've talked about this on this class before, but you can try to evenly space your, um, if you're punching a lot of things, you can try to evenly space them by watching how you start and, um, and then continue. Like, like, as you can see, I'm flipping it to the bottom so that I can see where I'm cutting. But um, I'm also paying attention to where on the previously cut circle, I have my, um, I have my, my placement probably went a little too close right there but I also have found for me personally if I go from one end to the other I tend to space them a little bit better and um, so that's that's a couple of tips to help you save paper I'm going to end up oh see I messed that one up sort of but now I'm just going to center this one in between these last two and I am going to have more than enough punch, punches um, circles punched move this you might can see how I did um, I didn't quite get them as evenly spaced as I'd hoped this this gap right here is a little further apart than I would have liked let me show you on where I cut them earlier just as a comparison really quick um, I did pretty good on well maybe not on that one <laughs> and then this is the one where the one I'm not going to show you is the one that I tried to um, get an extra one, and that's where I messed up. So this one's got a little bit of a mistake as well. But in general, um, you can you can kind of get it evenly spaced. 
And there is a way for you to make sure you're getting it by um, using your 13 inch mat and then knowing where you're cutting based on that. But um, I just didn't want to take the time to do all that. So I took my chances. Okay, um, next I'm gonna get my white paper and my 12 inch trimmer. And I am going to cut um, an eighth of an inch, which is going from, let me find my pointer, from the cut line on the trimmer to the previous cut line on the mat. That is about an eighth of an inch. And um, I'm gonna need at least three of these. And so if you cut and you feel like um, after you cut two, if you feel like they're not quite the same size, you might want to go ahead and cut um, a fourth or a fifth one so that you have options for, um, for the strips to use. And also I have found when you're cutting really narrow strips like this, if I hold my hand in the center of the paper, it helps to make sure things are gonna get um, cut straight and not end up being um, wopsided, um, you know, thicker at one end and thinner at the other end. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut three. After I cut two, I'm gonna make sure they're about the same size because since this is not an exact science, but that is really close there. So I'm happy with that one or with those two being the same. Go ahead and cut this third one. Okay, and again, let's compare it really quickly to see that they're about the same size. It looks like this final one is a tad thicker, but I don't think it's gonna matter. And as for a matter of fact, I can put it on my page where there's not gonna be two side by side. So that will help with that. All right. Now I'm gonna get my background paper. Oh man, you know what I just realized? I didn't get out two of these. So um, if I'm gonna do the double page spread, I'm gonna have to get that out um, to show y'all what to do or to show you how to lay out the second page. Um, I have my pre-cut circles. I just had them going um, back and forth from front to back only so I could count them easier. Um, you don't have to do that, but um, I am just going to eyeball by placing these on here without adhesive. And I do want, this pattern is not really directional, but I do kind of want it going the same direction. So, um, and I'm going to have them each about a quarter inch apart. Um, I'm probably getting them too close right now. And this first row, you're gonna have six circles, but the sixth circle is gonna go off the page a little bit down here at the bottom. I'm also coming about a quarter inch, well, about an eighth of an inch in from the left-hand side and about an eighth of an inch from the top. But again, I'm gonna want to place these about a quarter of an inch apart. It's not quite a quarter, but it's also more than um, an eighth. And when you get it where you think you want it, you can go ahead and um, this one needs to be turned so that design is going up and down a little bit better. So when you have it where you think you like it, you can go ahead and start putting adhesive on the back of your pieces. And y'all know I'm a firm believer in repositionable adhesive. And it's for this very reason. It's so that it does make it easy to move things should I need to. And what I'm gonna do too, <laughs> it's kind of gonna mess up what I just did by pre-placing them, but I'm gonna flip them all to the back and put my adhesive on at the same time. Oh, this, this one that's gonna go off the, the bottom, Remember, you don't need adhesive hanging off. Um, so, so put your, place your adhesive 
accordingly so that you um, you don't waste it. But with repo, you can just rub it right back off. So, all right, I'm going to um, start placing these. And again, it's about an eighth of an inch from the left hand side and a, almost um, a quarter of an inch between the one above it. And if you want to be really technical and, um, you know, get out a ruler and just be really precise, that is perfectly fine. Um, you can certainly do that. I'm just all about, let's get it done. Let's move. Let's go. I like to do pages quickly and I'm not worried about things being super precise. Um, that's just the way I've kind of always scrapbooked. So this is going to go off the page right here, and that's okay, because I'll just um, trim it in a few minutes. All right, my next six um, circles, they're going to be spaced. Um, see how my second row, I actually started with this one, and then I came back and did this later. But you want this circle to go in between the first two. So it's, you know, it's like that. So here again, I'm going to have about an eighth of an inch between um, between these two circles or three circles. <laughs> and then I'm just going to keep building that way, going down the page just to get a um, get it pre laid out. And one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Okay. So this, I'll go back in and put this to where it will go off the top up here. And again, once you're pretty well okay with how um, how it's going to look, then you can start doing your adhesive. Maybe I should just not um, worry about laying it out ahead of time since I'm using repo. I don't know. <laughs> and here it's only going to go um, on this bottom end because I know it's going to go off the top up there. But we want to place these first just to make sure I don't um, put that one in the wrong place. The show that I've been watching is something that a lot of people have been um, streaming for the last, I don't know, maybe year or so. And so if any of you know what show it is that I've been watching that has this wallpaper with green circles and a line coming down from it, you'll have to message me to let me know that you're also watching it. I'm not going to tell you just in case, <laughs> just in case. Oh. I forgot to tell you this part too. Um, I'm going to get my silicone mat and before we cut off those back pieces and I'm going to show you a fun trick. I don't think I did this in this class um, in my YouTube video recently, but I did do it in a class recently where when we had these thin strips like this, we just put them together on um, your silicone mat or your parchment paper or whatever you're using to keep um, the repositionable adhesive from getting on your workspace. If you put them together, then you can put um, the adhesive on them at the same time and you're not really wasting anything because it's wide enough that it's covering these three pieces at the same time and then you're not really wasting anything. So that's a pretty, Pretty neat trick. I forget who I learned that from, but I learned it from somebody not too long ago. And it also saves you time because you're only pulling out the um, tape runner at one time. One, yeah, one one time to do those three strips. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Let me move this. Okay, so I'm going to take my first strip, and I'm 
literally, and you can use your mat for this if, if you want to, um, this first one, the one on the far left, it's going to go at about where the 11 is on my custom cutting system mat. And you do want to go straight through the middle. Now, because I haven't trimmed my bottom circle yet, I can't really see that that is straight other than just eyeballing it. So maybe we should have cut that off first, but that's how that's gonna go. Let me turn this over real quick. Oh, this paper's pretty on the back. Um, it looks kind of like spring or grass or something. Maybe that's why I wanted to do the greens too, because I'm in a spring mood since spring started yesterday. I'll go ahead and trim this one while I have my scissors out and my paper flipped. And this piece, um, I kind of felt like I needed a little bit more adhesive since I had put it on ahead of time the other way. Okay, so now let me center this back on my mat and I'm going to get my second strip that's going to go down the, um, the middle of these circles. And it looks like this one's going to line up at about the nine and a quarter mark on my trimmer, I mean, on my mat, my 13 inch mat. I think that's what's gonna put, put it in the center of these circles. So at the top, it's at the nine and one quarter and at the bottom, it's at the three and a quarter. So stick that down. Um, I like it with the printed paper. I, I mean, I liked it fine with the, almost solid color papers. This this white is actually not a solid white background, but I can't get the light to pick up the um, the stripes in this paper. So you just have to trust me that this white background actually has a stripe in it. Okay, um, let me see how quickly, you know what? Instead of pull, taking the time to pull out my second piece of paper like this, I'm just gonna show you again what the second side looks like on my sample. And I'll still show you the mats for both. But so here's, so the left-hand page, I have two. And on the right-hand page, I only have one. So essentially this outside right edge is the same as the left edge. Um, my, my circles did, this bottom circle did get cut off a little bit more than this one did, but but um, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that, that they're not completely identical from one side to the other. Um, also, I've got three four by sixes, three four by six photo mats over here. I have three four by six photo mats on the right hand side plus a four by four. And let me make sure that's not four and a quarter. Yep, that's four. And that's six. Okay, so between the double page layout, I would get, I would be able to get um, seven photos. And then I still have room for journaling, technically, just depending on how much journaling you want to do. Um, of course, you can always further decorate with, um, you can further decorate with embellishments or a border maker cartridge, um, um, strips, you know, sticker strips or sticker clusters. You could even put clusters of stickers on your circles, but the wallpaper that I saw in that show just had, <laughs> just had circles with a line through it going down the wallpaper. All right, let me pretty quickly get my trimmer back so I can at least start making the mats. And remember when you're making mats, there is a way to do the magic mats, which I taught in a video not too long ago, but um, I'm just gonna cut this, this 12 by 12 piece of paper twice at four inches. And then I'll use this one piece to make, um, 
to make the four by six by turning two of these four inch strips. One turn. So now that's two four by sixes. This will be four four by sixes. And this last one, I will cut at four inches twice so that I have three four by four squares. And in my sample, I have my left hand page is the one that has um, three four by sixes and I just did, um, I did the one at the top horizontal. You can always make it go, um, you can change that up if you want to, like you could have, have it like this. So it's completely up to you how you want to place your photos and your mats. And um, I've got extra circles and I didn't even end up using the one that had the notch cut out of the bottom. Oh, well, and I say I have extra circles. I do have extra circles, but I've still got the other layout to do once I get my other piece of paper. All right, so if you want any of the things you see here, this paper again was from Vivid Melodies. The green is called Kelly Green Cardstock. This is the circle punch that makes things so fast in terms of um, punching out circles. I can always use my custom cutting system or I could use my circle maker, but this is really quick and fast. And um, technically our custom cutting system and our um, circle maker don't cut the size anyway. All right, so um, I hope that y'all enjoyed this and let's pretend like this is the green paper for the other side so that you can see what the other layout would look like to get in your other four pictures. Y'all have a great day and I will see you next week for my next YouTube video on um, Christie's cropping and creating. <laughs>